Hello, my name is Tudo, and I'm here today to speak to you about unity and why it is an essential part of our modern society. United we stand, divided we fall. There's a motto which represents the guideline to our survival and development throughout ages of both prosperity and decline. It also shows how important a part of our moral backbone unity is. Through this trait, man has strived to create a society in which all and each and every one of us can be successful. From villages to cities to countries, people have joined forces and interests in order to ensure mutual safety and prosperity. Despite the fact that many of us have nowadays forgotten that solitude and division usually lead to an inevitable downfall, strength in numbers and teamwork, the marks of unity, have proven themselves to be some of the most powerful tools we possess. To see why this is true, we need not look further than in our own past. Throughout history, the greatest economic, military and political powers have been formed by people who dared to join forces and work together. The great empires of the ancient world, for instance, such as the Roman and Macedonian ones, were overpowering in terms of political, economic and military strength. They extended their influence on an intercontinental level, and they conquered all of the divided states in their way. From a political point of view, democracy has nowadays become the dominant form of governance in the world. It is based on the power of the people, of the men. Thus, it has outlasted obsolete governance forms such as feudal and despotic monarchies and dictatorship, in which the power was concentrated in the hands of a single monarch and the people were divided, each fighting for their own. The greatest, most effective economic forces in history have been formed through alliances. Nowadays, the European Union and the United States of America are perhaps the most influential in the global economy. The various franchises of the EU and the US, such as McDonald's or Nokia, for instance, have spread globally from Africa to Asia. Moreover, the European and American currencies are perhaps the most widely used and renowned today. The most effective military forces in history have been formed through alliances, from NATO to the alliances of the Second World War, all the way to the empires of the ancient world. Strength in numbers and teamwork have proven themselves to be the deadliest weapons man has ever used in battle. And when we couple those with a great strategy, we can attain devastating results. We can see now why unity is a trait of vital importance to us, and why collaboration between us is essential. But whilst it is essential, collaboration is not always possible. It is only natural that conflict will spring up wherever two or more ideas should serve the same purpose. Jared Kintz's words from this book titled as Invisible explain this perfectly. Sometimes, the thing that pulls us together also pulls us apart, sort of like a zipper. Well, that thing Kintz was talking about consists of nothing more than our differences. And although our differences are the source of conflict, and conflict is usually inevitable, it is not unstoppable. So I say we take Kintz's words the other way around, and say that the thing that pulls us apart also pulls us together. I believe that in order to be successful in our collaborations, we have to be different. Because if we learn to channel each and every one of our different strengths towards the same purpose, there's no doubt that we will be successful in what we want to achieve. And we don't even need historical facts to explain why this is true. Think of something rather common to us, like modern technology. Who would have ever thought that a mobile phone, for instance, would ever be more than a wireless and portable telephone? And nowadays, mobile phones have become genuine handheld computers. They are perfect examples of what we can attain by combining various ideas and innovations, such as the telephone, a camera, the internet, video games even, in order to serve the same purpose, creating a new and a beneficial invention, a smartphone. Even cars now incorporate various innovations, such as video cameras, motion sensors, fingerprint ID, things that would have never been associated with a car four decades ago. The fact of the matter is, collaboration offers endless possibilities, and is beneficial both for the group and for each individual. To conclude, I believe that unity, the cause of all that I have stated, is a trait of vital importance to us, as it has helped us to strive 
thrive, and survive. It is just as G.K. Rowling once wrote in one of her most famous books, only as strong as we're united, as weak as we're divided. Thank you. How much do you agree with the statement that this unity breeds progress? Um, indeed, this unity might actually be understood as conflict. And as we know, some of the greatest technological advances have come through military progress, so through fueling conflicts. Then again, if we wouldn't make such mistakes, we wouldn't learn that in the end we are still all humans, that we should be united and not fight with each other. So, yeah, we do get some progress even from this unit. Uh, you've said that all the greatest achievements of humankind have been possible of, uh, through al alliances. But how would you explain that we ultimately destroy these alliances and undermine something we built ourselves? You see, we sometimes tend to believe that even though we are allied, we are united, we have to become one. Now that is a very tricky question because that one that we want to become actually means that only one person has the interest necessary to rule so many more countries. We shouldn't be tricked by that. We should remember that every alliance, is, every alliance, every union has its limits. And we have to take into consideration all of the interests of all of our people. I spoke of collaboration. The IMF basically is that. Uh, on the other hand, the IMF mostly leads to um, the downfall of many countries. How do you feel about that? Um, we have to realize that the European Union isn't the same thing for every country. We know that uh, we have to apply the same rules to all countries, even though some may actually not live up to those rules, to those expectations. So, uh, from this point of view, we have to become a bit more flexible and to better assess the possibilities and capabilities of every government, of every country, of every people. In terms of your argument of collaboration, I think the biggest experiment the world has tried is to United Nations, and how would you assess the success of the United Nations in terms of promoting collaboration? Well, so far, the United Nations have helped us, uh, let's say, prevent any further wars. Because, just as Albert Einstein said, I don't know what World War III will be fought with, but World War IV will be fought with six and sons. So we have to remember that in order to attain peace, we sometimes have to make compromises. Even though we may not like it, even though it's not good for us in the short term, but in the long run, it will prove beneficial.